Stop it. Get some help. Hello guys, it's Shitkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for today's video, we have a new GPU comparison, this time with the RTX 3060 versus the ARC A770 16GB versus the RX 6650 XT as well. Now, I'm doing this comparison because these cards are usually on the same price bracket. Take it 50, give it 50. Uh, let me just see, for example, in Mind Factory, Deutschland, Deutschland, basically Germany, which is one of the biggest sellers in terms of Europe, uh, one of the biggest, oh, it's my cat, one of the biggest European sellers. Uh, for example, the 6650 XT is currently at $299. The A770 8GB, because we don't even have the 16GB there, is at 295 euros, and the RTX 3060, the minimum price is at around 348 euros, okay? So, uh, the thing with the, the 8GB A770 is that it is exactly the same card, it is exactly the same card, but with 8GB less. The same does not apply to the RTX 3060 8 and 16GB, uh, 8, sorry, and, and 12GB, because the 8GB version has definitely lower physical units, also has, let's say, uh, lower buzz width, because it, it only has 128-bit buzz versus the 192-bit buzz on the 3060 so the 3060 8 gigabytes is more like a 3050 ti instead of a 3060 classic nvidia this is like common sense the more gpus you buy the more money you save that's right the more gpus you buy the more money you save as for the new egg us prices we have the 6650 for as low as 259 dollars the a770 8 gigabytes for as low as 289 and the rtx 3060 once again 12 gigabytes for as low as 349 dollars so the point being is it really worth to give $100 more, for example, for the 3060 versus the other two cards? And now that I retested most games with the recent drivers, is the ARC A770 finally worth its money or not? Let's find out right after the sponsor of today's video! Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall! Bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. Today's first game is Plague Tale Requiem. At 1080p, the RK770 is surprisingly the fastest card, being in terms of averages 13% faster than the RTX 3060 and 8% faster than the RX 6650 XT. Although, if we look at the 1% lows, it actually has lower 1% lows than the RTX 3060, and that's because this GPU still has frame pace issues on some parts of the game, so it's quite sad. At 1440p, the RK770 is still the fastest card, now being 19% faster than the RTX 3060 and 14% faster than the RX 6650 XT, while also delivering now higher 1% lows. And even at 4K, the scales get maintained, with the RK770 being the fastest card and the RTX 3060 the slowest.
In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, even though the game uses DirectX 12, the performance of Intel GPUs is a complete crap, barely delivering 50 FPS without resizable bar and only achieving around 78 average FPS at 1080p while both the other cards perform much better while consuming less power, with the RX 6650 XT being 47% faster than the RK770 here, which is insane. At 1440p the RK770 finally starts getting some ground due to the lower CPU overhead, being now closer to the other GPUs but still performing considerably worse. And it is only at 4K that it manages to almost match the other two GPUs, but once again with lower 1% lows and of course higher power draw. Cyberpunk 2077 was retested on the RK770 as with patch 1.62 there was a massive performance increase for the Intel GPUs. At 1080p the RK770 is now faster than the RTX 3060 while it was vastly slower before, now delivering 87 average FPS. At 1440p it pulls ahead even further now being 17% faster than the RTX 3060 and 11% faster than the RX 6650 XT which is awesome considering how it started, really really awesome. And at 4K the difference gets even bigger with the RK770 being the only card able to deliver at least a console experience of 30 average FPS. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is another one of those games where the frame pacing on Intel GPUs is kind of messed up, but that doesn't mean it is unplayable. At 1080p the RK770 performs almost on par with the RTX 3060, being only around 5% slower, but both are absolutely destroyed by the RX 6650 XT that is 26% faster than the RK770 and 20% faster than the RTX 3060. As the resolution goes up, the RX 6650 XT tends to lose a bit of performance compared to the other two cards due to its lack of raw power. Still, it manages its own even at 1440p, still being the fastest card. At 4K, all cards are basically on par with each other, with the RX 6650 XT still being slightly faster while consuming less power. Forza Horizon games usually tend to favor AMD GPUs in terms of performance, but it seems that the ARC A770 doesn't perform that bad as well. Even at 1080p it can deliver around the same average FPS as the RTX 3060 while delivering higher 1% lows, being around 16% slower than the RX 6650 XT. At 1440p the Intel GPU starts gaining some ground now being faster than the RTX 3060 and reducing the difference versus the RX 6650 XT. And at 4K it finally manages to surpass the other two cards delivering almost 60 average FPS while the other two cards stay on the low 50s. Hogwarts Legacy is one of the new additions to my benchmarks and if you are asking yourself why the RK770 has only rebar results, it is because the game would randomly quit if not using it. As for the results, this game loves VRAM as well, still even the 8GB RX 6650 XT was able to outmatch the 12GB RTX 3060 and the 16GB ARC A770, well at least at 1080p. 
At 1440p the ARC A770 starts to catch up once again, now being slightly faster than the RX 6650 XT. Interesting to note as well that using rebar and overclocking on the RTX 3060 actually decreases the game's smoothness somehow. Odd. And finally to finish these benchmarks, at 4K the RTX 3060 is overtaken even by the 8GB RX 6650 XT. But well, just a little less FPS and we would be running a slideshow, so nobody cares here. Approach Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra is type Cessna 152 4 miles south. Now with Microsoft Flight Simulator. At 1080p the ARC A770 shows a very stable performance even without resizable bar, which is actually hard to see. And with it activated, it actually is the fastest card, being 16% faster than the RTX 3060 and 3% faster than the RX 6650 XT. At 1440p the difference just gets higher, with the RK770 now being 18% faster than the RTX 3060 and 7% faster than the RX 6650 XT. And of course at 4K it is still the fastest card, with the RTX 3060 not being able to achieve even 30 FPS. Intel GPUs are known to work very well with Vulkan, and that can be seen in Rainbow Six Extraction, where even at 1080p, the ARC A770 easily outmatches the RTX 3060 by 13% in the averages, and most importantly, 55% in the 1% lows, showing how much smoother both Intel and AMD cards perform in this title. At 1440p the RTX 3060 still delivers the worst 1% lows, but now delivers better averages than the RX 6650 XT, while the ARC A770 maintains its lead over the RTX 3060 by 12%. And at 4K, the ARC A770 is the only GPU getting close to deliver 60 average FPS, while the other two stay considerably below. Red Dead Redemption 2 is our second Vulcan title, but things are slightly different now. Although the RK770 is still the fastest GPU here, being at 1080p 17% faster than the RX 6650 XT and 32% faster than the RTX 3060, we still have much lower minimums, indicating that the gameplay smoothness might not be that great. At 1440p things get maintained with the RK770 being much faster than the other two cards, delivering 73 average FPS, while the RTX 3060 can't even deliver 60. And at 4K, the RX 6650 XT and the RTX 3060 are tied, with the RK A770 delivering once again better average FPS. Guardians of the Galaxy is a complete mess on the RK770 with horrendous performance without resizable bar, and even when using it, we, while it delivers higher average FPS than the RX 6650 XT, it also delivers lower 1% lows. At 1440p the ARC A770 manages to get almost on par with the RTX 3060 while being faster than the RX 6650 XT in terms of averages, which is not bad. And at 4K, it finally surpasses the RTX 3060 by a little, while the RX 6650 XT barely achieves 50 average FPS. In The Last of Us Part 1, I was actually expecting much more from the RK770, as this is a recent game remake, and I thought Intel would work closely with Naughty Dog, for example, to improve their performance in this game. But sadly, that's not the case, with the RX 6650 XT, even with only 8GB VRAM, being the fastest card at 1080p, and the RK A770 being by far the slowest. At 1440p things get a bit better for the RK770 that still gets outperformed by both the other cards, with the RTX 3060 now being the fastest one. Things that did not change at 4K, where the RK770 got closer, but still behind. Pretty nice results for the RTX 3060 here. Brother! 
God of War is a DX11 title, one of those that ran really bad on the RK770 and one of those that definitely deserved some love. If we took in consideration the raw power, the ARC A770 would be the fastest card here, but that's not the case, with the RX 6650 XT being 33% faster than the RK770 and even 18% faster than the RTX 3060. At 1440p the ARC A770 barely loses FPS and that's how bad the CPU overhead is in Intel's drivers, at least in older APIs like the X11. And even at 1440p Ultra Y, the AMD card still dominates by quite a bit and the ARC A770 still delivers the worst results. Yeah. Now as for the 12 games average, at 1080p the RX 6650 XT is around 8% faster than the other two cards, at 1440p the ARC A770 takes the lead, being now 8.3% faster than the RTX 3060 and at 4K the Intel GPU is still the fastest one, with the RX 6650 XT now being slightly slower than the RTX 3060, but impressively not by much, even with much less raw power. Now let's see how these cards fare in terms of ray tracing. We're not from here either. We start with Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, which is a full ray tracing game. In here, the extra physical units of the RK770 definitely help in taking the lead in this game. It's actually impressive that Intel can do so much in terms of ray tracing in their first generation. Being at 1080p, 30% faster than the RTX 3060 and 85% faster than the RX 6650 XT, which is impressive. And the same happens at 1440p and 4K, where the ARC A770 just smacks the other two cards around. Very good results for the Intel GPU here. In Cyberpunk 2077, the ARC A770 is now slower than the RTX 3060 in terms of ray tracing, even though it is faster natively. But that isn't something new as this game is Nvidia's testing field, so that's quite understandable, let's say. Still, it performs much better than the RX 6650 XT, being 36% faster natively and 20% faster when using FSR and XCSS. At 1440p, the ARC A770 manages to match the RTX 3060 in native ray tracing performance, but loses when using the LSS and XCSS, even though it is faster without ray tracing. Resident Evil 4 Remake uses RE Engine, a game engine that, as can be seen, favors AMD GPUs in terms of performance. At 1080p, the RX 6650 XT is 31% faster than the RTX 3060, and even when activating ray tracing, it still manages to outmatch it by 4%. At 1440p, the RTX 3060 is still being massacred by the other two cards, with the RK770 now being the best performer, being around 20% faster than the RTX 3060, even when using ray tracing. And at 1440p ultra wide, well, it is more of the same, with the RK770 being the fastest GPU and the RTX 3060 being by far the slowest. To finish the ray tracing benchmarks, we have a more CPU slash bandwidth sided game. At 1080p, all GPUs were delivering around the same average FPS numbers, which is understandable and odd at the same time since there was no CPU bottleneck there. But once we enable ray tracing, we have once again the RK770 being the fastest GPU, being slightly faster than the RTX 3060 and 25% faster than the RX 6650 XT. Increasing the resolution to 1440p just makes the ARC A770 stand out more, being now 60% faster than the RX 6650 XT, damn that hurts, and 16% faster than the RTX 3060. And finally moving to 4K makes no difference for the RK770 that's still faster than the RTX 3060 and is stomping over the RX 6650 XT like it was nothing. Really good results for the Intel GPU here. The final part is for upscalers, being the first game, God of War. 
The optimization and CPU overhead is so big in this game for the RK770 that when using FSR at 1440p we got almost no FPS boost, while the FPS boost on the other two cards were much higher compared to their base numbers. And sadly, it is exactly the same at 1440p ultra wide, where the ARC A770 simply doesn't function well, getting a mild 9% increase, where the other two cards get around 24%. Gladly, that's not the case with Spider-Man Remastered, where we get a very good performance boost with both FSR and XESS maintaining the RK770 in a solid leading position. It also seems that both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs run XESS poorly, with small performance gains, but mainly the AMD GPUs. That also happens in Cyberpunk 2077 with XESS 1.1, where the Intel GPUs run it with around the same performance as FSR, but the AMD GPUs run XESS much slower than they do with FSR, which is interesting to note. And well, all seen, so let's move to the conclusion. So guys, as you saw, things nowadays are very interesting in the low to mid-range market. In this case, the 6650 XT versus the A770 versus the 3060. And although the A770 was supposed to at least go go pair to pair, uh, not pair to pair, go like face to face, not face to face as well. Although it was supposed to match the 3070, that thing did not happen. Did not happen because, well, because drivers, uh, because game engines, because many things, for example, Cyberpunk 2077 actually needed a game update in order to work very well with the RK770, so drivers alone couldn't do it. Intel had to work with CD Projekt in order to, in order for them to release a patch, in order for them to optimize their game engine to the Intel Arc GPUs uh, and release a patch in order for them to perform better, okay? So sometimes drivers alone uh, won't cut it and you need to work with the developers for them to actually optimize their game engines for your, your GPUs and that's what Intel did in some with some game engines, but they need to do it a lot more. Even more for the for the frame pacing issues that still bother Intel GPUs in some games. Not not in all games, in most games it is perfectly fine right now, but in, in some of them the frame pacing issues are still a very annoying thing, uh, because although you have high FPS numbers, the frame pace is just not smooth enough uh, and when you are going to, to the gameplay, even if you disable the metrics, you can definitely notice that the smoothness isn't as it should be, okay? It is smooth, but it isn't as smooth as it should be, okay? As it should be, so that's one of the issues of the Intel GPUs right now. And this video also shows that the RTX 3060 literally has no value right now. You can get a 6650 XT that, as you saw, performs at least at 1080p and 1440p, where most people are gonna use it, mostly at 1080p. It performs better in rasterization than the 3060 while consuming less power. Uh, in terms of ray tracing, if the game isn't pending a lot for the NVIDIA side, it doesn't perform that bad in terms of ray tracing, okay? Not that bad. Um, and if you want a midterm, if you don't, if you don't really worry about compromising in some features and so on, you can actually get the A770. Um, and like you saw, well, you have more ray tracing performance, you have less rasterization in some games, more rasterization performance in some games, but overall, the RK770 in ray tracing and in these games that we tested is still the fastest card, uh, at least for once again in rasterization and overall in ray tracing. Um, so it is indeed worth to, to give it a try, at least, to give it a try. But if you want to, let's say, spend the same amount of money as the 3060, you can just get the 6700 XT, which is the same price right now, or sometimes even cheaper, and is indeed, and is indeed much faster. So guys, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video, if you have any doubts, leave them on the comment section, and also let me know which of these three GPUs you would get if it was you who were buying, okay? If, if it was for you, what GPU would you get? By the way, uh, I already told you in the in the previous video that um, AMD actually sent me finally the 6950 XT from ASRock, it is there, let me just grab it. Uh, it's a massive GPU, look at this monster. Crazy, sick looks, it just looks very, very good. Um, and it's a massive, a massive GPU, yeah. And to make this even better, MSI also sent me the 4070. So 
you can you actually know that in some time you'll have the 4070 versus the 6950 XT because these cards are at around the same price right now at least in um, at least in in US so you can get the, the 6950 XT for $600, the same as this one, and $600 is a steal for that card. It's it's a complete, complete and utterly amazing deal. <laughs> yeah, so tests will come with the 4070, tests will come with the 6950 XT. Once again, thanks a lot for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and see you in the comment section and in the, ne and in the next video. Yeah.